Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be reading to you guys my accepted Yale supplement essays. Um, and I applied regular decision. And the major that I applied to were economics. Um, my second option was ethics, politics, and economics. And my third one is global affairs, um, which is kind of like international relations plus more like economics analysis as well i think um so i guess like the theme before you go in just as a disclaimer is that um my ecs and also my essay topics are pretty aligned to like economics political thought so yeah i hope this helps regardless um if you are you know planning to major in economics when you apply but I'll just be reading my college supplements, and let's get right to it. So the first college supplement question that Yale asked, there is like seven in total, which is a lot. <laughs> um, so the first one is, this one is a short answer question, and I think this was about like 200 words, but I kind of forgot. So this one was, Tell us about a topic or idea that excites you and is related to one or more academic areas you selected above. Why are you drawn to it? So I responded and I'll kind of like say this in a more like melodramatic way because that was like my intent going in. I kind of wanted to like stand out from the crowd and just ask a bunch of questions and kind of like reveal my academic interests that way. So all right, let's read this. What is the role of the free market in today's society? Can everything be for sale? How should a kidney transplant be distributed based on one's ability to pay, line on a queue, or the amount of utility one will derive? Can the free market be corrosive to relationships between economic agents? Is it permissible for Amazon to take out life insurance for workers? On one hand, you could argue that consent is enough. However, critics have pointed out that the act itself is illegitimate to a relationship between worker and manager. Would the manager have an interest in the worker's death because they have a market incentive to collect insurance money? Exploring these questions in an online course last summer, I became intrigued with exploring the moral dimension of economics as opposed to more heterodox ideas like homo economicus. I'm not sure if, that, if I'm saying that right. The rational man driven solely by self-interest. Instead, I'll recognize the complex ways in which our decisions are influenced through incentives, behavior nudges, or heuristics to simplify tough decisions and their implications through contemporary debates that range from the financial crisis that was underpinned by an excessive reliance on market incentive to failures in international carbon regulation. So that was my first supplement essay, and I actually got a note from my admissions officer, and she specifically mentioned um, this exact supplement that I wrote, so I guess she said it was really compelling, so I guess, like, the way I made it and kind of, like, I didn't, I kind of, like, showed it, didn't really tell it through, like, a bunch of questions, and it kind of made the admissions officers really think about, like, how they would respond. And yeah, I am really proud of this supplement that I wrote. Um, but yeah, I hope that provides a good example. All right, so the next supplement that Yale asked was, what is it about Yale that has led you to apply? And this is 125 words or fewer. And I responded, as a youth advocate, leader, entrepreneur, I admire Yale's commitment to catalyzing global change by cultivating an innovative, multidisciplinary, and inclusive student body. Programs such as the Vein Lecture Series, First Year Seminars, Yes Scholars Program, and the launch of the Yale Global Affairs Major and Yale Ventures Initiative will allow me to explore the unlikely connections that I can make between the social and natural sciences, humanities, and arts. Yale's partnership with New Haven through community investment programs appeals to me as I thrive at the intersection of public service, community building, and social entrepreneurship. I see myself having late night conversations with diverse peers to entertain ideas I don't necessarily agree with, participating in Yale's day of service, and rooting for the Bulldogs. 
So just some analysis on this supplement. Um, I know that Yale has a very like multi-dimensional approach that they have for kind of like major selection and just like academic interest and I really try to like show that. They really like people like like students just like combining different majors and interests and really like setting their own interdisciplinary studies through the curriculum and flexibility that Yale offers, including like the different like opportunities such as lecture series, seminars, different programs, different events that they host, um, or even like the directed studies um, program and a bunch of other initiatives. Um, and another thing that I think um, that um, I would say like that I did a lot of research on was um, I went to the news like Yale News website and I kind of saw like what like developments that Yale had and kind of like um, I was just saying like what the dean was saying and what they recommended for students I'll kind of link it above but they said something about how they kind of want like especially in a in this time period of increasing political polarization they kind of want more people to really like come together share the ideas and not really and to break free from the echo chamber that we live in today so i really tried to capitalize on that and just did a lot of research on what specifically the values that yale values <laughs> Um, and I definitely look a lot at their mission statement and a lot of like the news articles they had and their website, definitely. So I definitely think that helped me. Um, and I guess just tying it together and relating it back to you, really. And then another section of Yale supplement essays is that they ask a bunch of short answer questions. Um, and they ask you to respond in approximately 35 words. Um, and the first one that they asked me was, what inspires you? And this was what I put. Family, being part of a bigger mission that transcends my own needs. Lighting a flame to advance educational and economic opportunities for others. Unleashing my entrepreneurial spirit. And I separated them with a semicolon. The next question, short answer is, you are teaching a Yale course. What is it called? And I responded, a new class of hereditary aristocracy, generational wealth, varsity blue, and students for fair emissions. Whatever happened to the common good? Third question is, who would you invite to speak and what would you ask them to discuss? Rene Girard, what are the implications of mimetic de desire and the scapegoat mechanism on our human psyche as it relates to our increasing fantasization with digital media and COVID scapegoating? And the fourth is just something about you. And I responded, tumbling down the street on my bike, I see the rustle of leaves, city goers, and diverse shops maintained by people who overcame barriers to reclaim themselves in America's enterprise of independence. And I guess I'll just like briefly touch upon like um, the short answer questions, those short takes. I think the short takes are really there so that the college your admissions officer will kind of have like an idea of what kind of like interests you have and like in a really brief matter um, and kind of like what kind of student you'll be on campus. So like with the new Yale course, they're probably wondering like what kind of classes will this prospective Yale take if they were admitted? Like what contribution will they have on campus if do they have like a lot of motivation? What are their motivation? What is their biggest inspiration? And how can we, and how can Yale as an institution continue to kind of like foster this person, this student? Um, and I guess like the last one, which is like, what is something about you that's not included anywhere else in your application? I guess this is just something fun, but also just something that 
it, it just kind of like focus on yourself and what you want to really like bring to light about yourself because it is really random um what you can include you can include like anything from i don't know like your favorite minion collection to um like your favorite movies or something um i guess it's just like showing what you truly value um yeah and i think that um really just being you through the process and kind of just like creating a more uniform um, perception of yourself. Um, so I guess really just tying that narrative about yourself is really important as you craft your short um, answers, but also just make sure that you are showing your intellectual curiosity, especially for an institution like Yale, where the like academics and just like what kind of student you are really matters first in this in this world in this college admissions world um, and i think that's what they're really looking for all right we finally got to, got to the last part which is the essay and the essay they ask you to respond in 400 words or fewer and they actually ask you they you could choose between two prompts um, so i chose the first prompt and I actually did the second prompt because I didn't realize that you only had to do one of them. I thought you had to do both. So yeah, I, I just don't really read properly, so don't be like me. Um, but I did the first prompt, and the first prompt um, says, Yale carries out its mission through the free exchange of ideas in an ethical, interdependent, and diverse community. Reflect on a time when you exchange ideas about an important issue with someone holding an opposing view. How did the experience lead you either to change your to change your opinion or to sharpen your reasons for holding on to it? And this was what I responded. So this is gonna um, this is gonna be a bit longer, but all right. I frequently debate with relatives from abroad about topics such as China's role in global affairs, and recently the legitimacy of the One China policy. I argue that China shouldn't interfere with Taiwan and its right to be an independent nation with a desire to be ruled separately and have an identity of its own after gaining de facto independence from the mainland for over 70 years. In addition, after World War II, the 1951 San Francisco Treaty, written when Japan relinquished its control over Taiwan, never formally settled who would have the title of the island. My relative counters by arguing that Taiwan has always belonged to China since time immemorial. Thus, reunification is warranted and eminent. This one China principle also represents the consensus of the international world order and national, un and national unification. When completed, is the only way to protect Taiwan against foreign enemies who might invade and have China fall short of national rejuvenation and societal progress. Though we don't agree, we still manage to find common ground despite the political sensitivity surrounding this. We both agree that the record and analysis of history inevitably have biases due to the interpreter's subjectivity. More specifically, the explanation bias may lead us to draw more rigid conclusions in causal links than what the evidence may suggest. This experience, and many others to come, has affirmed for me that my opinion and hers both serve as a prism through which we view the world, which isn't necessarily good or bad, it's simply influenced by our personal upbringing, background, and the cultural values that we are enmeshed in. From our discussions, I've been encouraged to seek out opinions that differ from mine, as I've realized that debates aren't about winning the argument, instead it's about opening your mind to opposing views in a in an attempt to find common ground, share civil discourse, and question our own stance surrounding the topic. Else, dialogue will be confrontational and akin to the hopelessly deep echo chamber that Plato forewarned in the allegory of the cave. 
I see Yale as another space where I can critically engage with a diverse student body to explore the contradictions, debate with an open mind, while acknowledging our shared humanity and embodied enlightened globalism while maintaining an open spirit of inquiry, civility, and lively debates. Maybe, if they're up for it, we we'll even have Thanksgiving dinner together. So I'm not sure if you guys um, know why I mentioned Thanksgiving dinner, but I kind of mentioned it at the end just as like a joke kind of. Um, but basically it references to like this family tension that occurs, especially between like relatives, about how they don't even want to have like Thanksgiving together because of like the political rifts that have really like, that have really like kind of like engendered American society at, at large. And I just like saw it in the news and I thought it would be kind of like a like funny reference but also just like a light-hearted like funny reference I guess um but like in general I guess I'll just comment on like my response um so the first part definitely has like a lot of history on it and kind of like I kind of really detailed my arguments and her arguments um and then um I kind of try to find like a, a like a common ground where I can show to Yale that I have an open mind, that I can reconcile ideas that are different from mine. And um, I also wanted to show that I was open to diverse opinions and I kind of like understood where this tendency comes from, um, which is like the explanation bias um, and just like our inner psychology. Um, and then I kind of also related it to a lot of like, um, literature I guess with like Plato, Allegory of the Cave, and what I learned through the experience and how this experience will continue throughout my Yale education um, with like the ending. So I guess it's really just about like tying everything together and just making sure that you portray yourself in the best light and you truly embody the values that your prospective college values, which is probably like having an open mind, um, being able to talk to others with civility despite having like differing opinions and just having empathy through the process. So I definitely think that those tips you should definitely keep on the back of your head. Um, but that's the end for my um, Yale supplements. So I hope this helps you and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and feel free to comment down below if you have any questions, comments, like, I'm super open to answering any. I know that the college application process was really stressful, um, and, you know, I'm always here to help if you have any questions. Alright, see you next time. Bye!